You know, I broke my leg about five, uh, in 2005 and talk about a better day. That, I was just going to get a taco. A friend of mine, Shelly Kennedy, called me and said, meet me at the burrito shop. I love burritos and I love Mexican food. It's, you know, it's the gift that keeps on giving. I love it. And so I thought I'd ride my motorcycle because I had a Honda Silverwing. It's really just a moped with an attitude. It wasn't a, it wasn't a real motorcycle. I mean, it would go 100, but it's, it's automatic because I have ADD. And I used to have ADHD, but y'all, I dropped the H. I'm too old. I'm too old to be that hyper. I'm now just attention deficit disordered. And I was, what was I talking about? And so, and so I was going to meet Shelly Kennedy, and I thought I'd ride my motorcycle. And, uh, and I got on it, and it was automatic, because, you know, I hate to change gears. That's too much to think about. So I had this automatic motor, and I was going down the road, going down Shepherd Drive in Houston. Anybody know that road? Shepherd Drive, yeah, see, it's a famous road, and it's just one way, and I thought, you know, what would it hurt if I didn't wear my helmet? Well, that was a little self-righteous on your part. Well, we have a law, you know that, don't you? We have a law in Texas, you don't have to wear your helmet, because we don't care about our stupid people. You're stupid enough not to wear a helmet? Go ahead, we don't need gear. <laughs> and I didn't wear my helmet because, you know, it's hard to get a helmet on this head. I've always had a head this big. You have to butter it to get it on. I used to come home from school and say, Mama, everybody's making fun of my big head. She'd go, oh, Mark, it's okay. Let me dry your eyes. So, So I was driving down Shepherd Drive and loving my life. It was a beautiful, clear day. It wasn't humid, you know, like it normally is in Houston. And got as far as 11th Street and Shepherd. Somebody pulled out of the blockbusters, all excited about their movie. Didn't see me. And I slammed on the brakes. And I found out when you slam on the brakes on a motorcycle, you're going down because they don't have anti-lock brakes. I didn't know that. And I slammed them on. I'd never had any occasion to slam on the brakes before. And I start heading towards Shepherd Drive without a helmet. And I was, oh, two things went through my mind. Number one, this going to hurt. <laughs> Number two, stay awake. Stay awake. Whatever you do, stay awake. Because you know I hate to miss anything. <laughs> Especially if it's happening to me. I slammed my head on Shepherd Drive, and I remember thinking immediately, I'm awake, and, but I was sliding across the road, and the motorcycle was sliding ahead of me, and people were dodging the motorcycle, and they were dodging me, and I was going, thank you. <laughs> and I finally come to a stop in the road, and I'm checking my body, my head's bleeding, but it, it, no brains were hanging out. <laughs> and I was conscious, and this big old redneck, my people, this big old redneck in a truck pulled up next to me and said, do you need an ambulance? I said, I don't know if I do or not, because I hadn't checked my leg yet. I hadn't tried to stand up. He said, well, we've already called one. And then I saw some guys standing on the side of the road. I said, could y'all help me get off the road? They said, we no speak English. I said, will you L help me get off the L road? I think I L broke on my L let go. And they, once they understood my Spanglish, they came to me. I remember thinking it was just like the Good Samaritan in the Bible. Because they came to me with big, big Mexican smiles and beautiful teeth. And they wrapped their arms around me and they carried me off the road. And they waited on me till the ambulance came. And when it showed up, the first thing those boys did in the ambulance, you need to know this, they cut off my britches. In front of God and everybody. They didn't say, may I cut off your britches? They just cut them off. And you know, your mama was right. Always wear clean underwear because you never know when they're going to cut your britches off and mine were clean before I hit Shepherd.
But they put me in the ambulance, and then we start heading down Shepherd Drive. Come to find out, ambulances have no shocks. You could roll over a quarter and tell if it was heads or tails. We finally got to the hospital, and when they moved me, I'm telling y'all, when they moved me from the ambulance bed to the hospital bed, my shock was over. I had been in shock up to this point. I'd never been in shock before. But it was over at this point. I have never known pain like that in my life. No matter which way I moved this leg, it hurt. And I started crying. And I am so thankful that I am a Baptist. Because you Pentecostals would go to hell for what I said. I didn't even know I knew those words. They come flying out of me like old friends. Then the doctor brought me a morphine drip. I became a Pentecostal. I could hardly speak English, I'm telling you. I went from hellish pain to heavenly gain, like that. And then while I was hiring a kite, the doctor brings me papers to sign. Once I'd settled down, he said, now you can see. I thought they wanted autographs. I didn't know. <laughs> Who's this to? They said, just sign your name. I was giving them permission to do surgery on me. I was giving them permission to put dead people in me. Because from here to here, I hadn't just knocked it out of joint. I had shattered the whole bone. It was empty. It was a big hole. And they had to fill it up with dead people. You know they do that now. You need to donate your bones when you die. You'll make a floppy corpse, but you'll never miss it. <laughs> and people like me will appreciate it. Because from here to here, from here to here are people I don't even know. <laughs> but I love them. <laughs> I just hope they were saved. Well, think about it. If they weren't saved and the Lord comes back, <laughs> is my knee going to fall out? <laughs> well, what if, what if they were saved and the dead in Christ rise first? <laughs> and I go chasing them through the pearly gates. Get back in here! No, I'm serious though. I think they put some women in here. There's some women in here, y'all. Because every time I pass a Walmart, my legs start shaking. <laughs> Bill, get me out of this. I don't have an ending to this story. It's just... <laughs>